Hello, Dork Squad. I'm Jonathan Cormer, and you're listening to Dork Tales Storytime, the podcast for kids and their pop culture loving grown ups. It's a beautiful day for a story, adventure and glory, new friends and old ones too. It's an excellent day to get swept away in a tale, so let us regale you. Ooh, Jonathan, Jonathan! What's up, Reg? Jonathan, my new friend here. Oh, ah, sorry, I didn't see you there on Reggie's back. Oh, no worries. I am pretty small. Yes, my new friend, Chris the Snail, hitched a ride on my quills as I ran to your home. Chris, this is my good friend, Jonathan. He's a human. Ah, so I see. Hello, Jonathan. Nice to meet you, Chris. I love your shell. Oh, (laughs) thank you. Chris is new to the forest and was telling me about his struggles with making friends. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Chris. Well, it is nice to be around such a good example of friendship with you two. In fact, the whole folktale forest is nice. But I'm a bit too nervous to make too many new friends, aside from Reginald here. I have yet to find the courage to, as they say, come out of my shell. I was thinking you could tell Chris that story you told me to help him feel more confident in his shell. Oh, uh, well, I've told you a lot of stories. Oh, yes, yes, of course. But I'm talking about that one story. You know, that one. Which one? The one with the main character, who does the thing and then learns the thing from doing that thing. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to need a few more specifics here, Reg. Oh, come on now. It's the one. You know, the one. Yeah, any details would be, ah, yes, I finally remember. (laughs) The malleable tailor. Uh, yes, Jonathan? I don't think that's it. The valuable tailor. Nope, not it either. The Valley Hen Tailor. Oh, you mean the Valiant Tailor. Valiant? Oh, that means brave, courageous. And a tailor is someone who makes and alters clothes. No, it's definitely the Valley Hen Tailor. I know her. The Valley Hen Tailor? Yes, she lives in between two mountains the valley. She's a female chicken, a hen, and her name is Taylor. Like, did someone say my name? Cluck! Ah, see, Jonathan, I stand corrected. Valley Hen Taylor, it is I, Reginald, and here's Jonathan and our new friend Chris. Hi, Jonathan and I were about to share your story to help Chris find the courage to make new friends in a new home. OMG, Cluck! Well, let's all gather round and listen to Reg's story. About you, Taylor. Awesome, like Tubular. I'm ready. Once upon a time, there was a valley hen named Taylor. Cluck! She was a seamstress and a student, who, in spite of her gregarious demeanor, was actually quite shy. She had trouble talking to other barnyard animals. It is, like, really hard to talk to people sometimes, Clark. Well, I couldn't agree more. One morning, Taylor did something amazing. I, like, caught six grains of feed in my beak at the same time. She was so proud. Never before did she have that much trust in herself. She knew the surrounding creatures would agree if they only knew. So she started singing her own praises. Six and one, like six and one. And the giants in the hillside heard of her feet. 
G -g -g giants. Oh, I'm way smaller than a giant. Totally, like me too, Cluck. Oh my. When the giants heard they had a new neighbor that did something so absolutely radical. Uh, yes, radical. They wanted to throw a massive welcome to the neighborhood party, complete with a celebration of this awesome feat. But Taylor was feeling shy about attending. It was like totally terrifying. I kept trying to think of ways I could trick the giants into liking me, showering them with compliments, trying to look super duper cool, anything I could think of that would fool them. So is that what you did, Taylor? Actually, I just realized, Cluck, that I needed to be myself. But how? Taylor went through three scary trials to prove to herself that she belonged with the Barnyard Buddies and the Hillside Giants, and that her six-in-one was worth the celebration. Trials? Yes, the terrifying trials of talking to new neighbors. Ooh. Oh, what are those? There are like three of them. The first was to believe in myself, which is harder than it looks. Taylor had to call on some of the things she always really loved about herself to remind her that she was awesome just as is. I'm like really kind. I'm really smart. I love to paint barnyard landscapes. Oh, and I'm really good at catching feed with my beak. Those are all awesome. Then... The second trial, <gasps> the most terrifying trials of all, Taylor had to go to the party and say hello. <gasps> no, like, yes. yes. She reminded herself once again, she was awesome as is and had achieved some awesome things waddled her little hen legs right up the hills, and when she arrived, one of the giants said, Hello! And do you know what Taylor said in return? Uh, nothing at all. She ran away due to f -f 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 fear. She held her head high and clucked loud enough for them to hear, like, Hello! Wow! And they were really nice. They all introduced themselves to me after we said hello. I got to meet Gizmo, Stomp, Crasher, and Bob. And Bob makes the most excellent scones. I know, right? And they gave me a welcome basket and a little certificate to remember the six in one. Oh, but wait, that was only two trials. Uh, trying to remind yourself that you're awesome just the way you are. And going to the party, even though you were nervous to say hello. What was the third trial? Dancing. Dancing. Dancing? That's right. Taylor didn't know until she got there that it was going to turn into a dance party. Come on, everyone. Let's boogie. Like, oh no, I couldn't. What if I make a fool of myself? What if you trip and fall? What if I'm off beat? What if everyone looks at you? These were all of the thoughts going through Taylor's mind. But all of the gyrating, dancing giants looked like they were having so much fun. And they already showed you how accepting and welcoming they were, especially when you were brave enough to show them who you are. That's right. So, guess what Taylor did? Uh, danced? Like no one was watching. Whee! <laughs> Bravo! When Taylor believed in herself, and those around her accepted her for who she is, she made so many wonderful friends. Like, exactly, Cluck. So, what do you think, Chris? Huh, it sounds like sometimes you may be frightened, and the fear is very real, but it doesn't mean what you're afraid of will come true. 
Exactly. And just believing in yourself can be the first step towards confidence clock. We can also be good friends and help others overcome their fear by accepting them for who they are. And I hope we are doing that for you right now, Chris. Like you've got another new friend in me, Cluck. Aw, gee, (laughs) thanks. You'll have to teach me some of your dance moves. Totally. My dancing is now the highlight of any giant's big party. I can show you, Chris. (laughs) All right. Everyone step to the left, step to the right. Flap your wings and bring them in tight. Bump your head and tap your toes. Wiggle your fingers and wiggle your nose. Uh, this all may be a bit too advanced for me. So maybe I'll just slide around to the beat. Let's all do the electric slime. Radical. I love this move. You're all snailing it. <laughs> Atta boy, Chris. Atta boy. This has been a John in Character production. Today's story was written by Amy Thompson, edited by Molly Murphy, and performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Hamilton Studios. Reach out to us on Instagram or email us at dorktalestorytime at gmail.com. Find links in the show notes or go to dorktalestorytime.com. Now, go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next Once Upon a Time. Tales.